Well, what's going on internet? IG back again today, and I'm looking at the release candidate as time of the recording of this video of Netrunner 2019, or the, the 19.01 release. So folks, if you've been around and you've seen Linux distributions come and go, you'll know that KDE distributions are a bit of a dime a dozen. There's a lot of great KDE desktop oriented distributions out there. And I'm digging into Netrunner today, uh, not only just because they're, they're refreshing a release, but it's actually been a very long time since I looked at a Netrunner release. And right back in the day, I'm talking uh, for me anyway, probably around 2014, 2015, uh, actually, probably even earlier than that, I started looking at Netrunner and uh, and saw it as basically a juiced up KDE desktop, fully featured, nothing left out, uh, all of the all of the options thrown at the user, all of the uh, all the programs and apps you could ever want out of the box, and uh, and so what we're going to look at today is what has changed, what does this distribution do differently from other KDE desktops out there. And why would you want to give this one uh, any of your time at all? Um, so here's the thing. I'm probably going to be a bit rougher on this distribution than I have been on other desktop uh, Linux distributions. And if you've been around my channel for a while, you know that it's pretty rare of me to jump on and really rag on a distribution. Um, but that's not to say that there needs to be criticism where criticism is due. So let's start out by looking at what some of the other KDE distributions are out there. And uh, and I guess what the ones at least that I've had experience with in, in recent times. So uh, first up, you've got distributions like KDE Neon. KDE Neon has probably become a bit of a flagship for the KDE uh, Plasma desktop. And uh, reason being is because it runs basically stock uh, KDE Plasma on top of a, a, a long-term support release of Ubuntu, which is, again, probably one of the most ubiquitous distro bases out there. So that's KDE Neon. Uh, you get up-to-date great KDE support for all of the uh, all the different apps and the KDE Plasma desktop itself, but the actual core is pretty outdated pretty fast. Then you've got a lot of rolling release based options, and this is where the list really opens up. You have distributions like Chakra Linux, uh, which I actually haven't heard a whole lot of uh, in recent times. Um, you also have Car OS or Chaos, uh, their main goal is to really provide a really lean, mean, cute uh, KDE based desktop. And, uh, and yeah, and you can kind of, uh, again, check all these out on their, uh, on their website. Now, all of these, and, and of course, then you've got like the big players like Manjaro, which have uh, rolling releases for pretty much every desktop environment out there. Um, so they have their own KDE spin. You've obviously got Antigos. Uh, I think that's how you say it anyway. Antigos, 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 let's go with that. Um, so, and again, all of you, you guys have probably already commented with what your favorite KDE Plasma desktop is. But the reason why I'm looking at this landscape is I'm wanting to get, uh, I'm wanting to introduce a bit of a picture as to where KDE is at in terms of what you can run if you want to run uh, KDE. And of course, we have OpenSUSE uh, Tumbleweed, which is, in my opinion, probably one of the more underrated um, distributions out there. Um, OpenSUSE have always done a great job uh, in creating a KDE-based um, distribution, and uh, and Tumbleweed is a fantastic structure, technically speaking, for a rolling release. Okay, so where does Netrunner fit in? Well, Netrunner is actually a really weird fence sitter in that it it does have a release schedule-based distribution, which is what we're looking at today, and that is uh, that is based on Debian testing or a snapshot of Debian testing, I should say. Um, and then they also have Netrunner Rolling, which in turn is based on Manjaro. Now, I'm not going to go into Netrunner Rolling today. That'll be probably a different video if you guys see that that's worth getting into. Um, but Netrunner as a, as a released schedule base um, is uh, Debian testing. And, uh, and from that, as of right now, we get a pretty up-to-date snapshot with a very vast package base. Uh, because of course it's Debian and there's a Debian package for pretty much everything out there. Um, so with all that said and done, the, the Netrunner OS itself, um, where does it come from? Well, it's developed by a community of great people on the internet, um, but it also gets a lot of support from Blue Systems, which is a German IT company. And, uh, and they also contribute an awful lot to upstream KDE Plasma development or just KDE development in general. 
Um, and so this is what makes this distribution interesting to me, is that you've got a lot of upstream contributions to um, bigger KDE projects, and oftentimes a lot of the cool new features that come and a part of KDE are ideas or iterations that we've seen in Netrunner before. So for example, this menu. Uh, this, menu this menu is called the simple menu, I believe, and uh, it ships with a few different, um, it ships with a few different menu or application launches by default. Um, by default, the application uh, dashboard is what is shipped by default and you've got your different categories down the side. It's very similar to kind of a GNOME shell sort of interface. Um, and then, again, it's all triggered using the meta key, um, but when you right click, you've got your alternatives and they also have their simple menu there, which I kind of prefer. It's a lot, uh, it's a lot less intrusive than the full screen um, application launcher. Now it's an example like that, that this desktop contributes to, uh, to KDE and to the Plasma desktop outside of this distribution. Now having said that, they do have a very unique vision uh, or a very unique uh, customization out of the box of what they see KDE as capable of. Because if you'll notice, we've got very custom uh, icon set, we've got a very interesting custom theme going on here, and, uh, and they've actually gone and tweaked a few things, which I'll get into in just a bit, but one, for example, is the fact that uh, they have a custom category under the system settings called Plasma Tweaks, where they've thrown everything to do with theming, including GNOME application style theming, uh, which is enabled out of the box, which a lot of KDE distributions don't do, which I kind of value this because you can customize what GTK based applications look like under a KDE distribution. So here's here's my most blunt knock that I can give Netrunner. That is that it bundles everything and the kitchen sink into this distribution. It uses preload daemons, I believe, but all of this combines to make a very heavy distribution. Uh, oh yeah, pop-up terminal, did I mention that? So, you know, anybody who lives a lot in the command line likes that out of the box, so they've got that. But honestly, this distribution has everything in the kitchen sink, um, and somehow, even though the application list is pretty bloated, uh, the distribution, especially for a KDE one, is uh, is pretty heavy on the resources. So if you go to the, uh, if we go to the system monitor and check that out, um, you can kind of see that in, um, the system under under a pretty light load. There's not a whole lot going on CPU wise, but we're already using a gig of of RAM. And for Plasma um, in 2019, that's pretty heavy when you've got a lot of other distributions that are pulling off a desktop for about half that. Um, and again, all of this boils down to just the way that these guys have designed their distribution to be basically feature complete out of the box um, with all of the apps and services and tweaks that you could possibly want. Now, speaking of tweaks, um, the other thing that I really like about Netrunner is the fact that they bundle a lot of extra power into Dolphin. Dolphin as a file manager for KDE is already one of the most powerful file managers out there. But the fact that these guys take it a little bit further and include extensions for um, managing uh, Git repositories, SVN, Mercurial, and Bazaar repositories. Um, they just take the file management power of Dolphin and just kick it up a notch or three. And, uh, and if you're looking for a feature complete um, file manager without having to do a lot of tweaking yourself, then I'm sure you will probably appreciate that. You'll also notice that by default they include a lot of the uh, they include a lot of the file menus in a lot of their applications where KDE as a as a trend is trying to get rid of them. You'll notice that a lot of the default KDE applications uh, they have their menus enabled by default. Where usually in a lot of stock KDE distributions uh, they're trying to kind of hide these away in favor of your uh, in favor of your little kind of hamburger menu or cog menu out to the side here that you can drop down. Now again, this goes back and forth as to what people find more useful. But again, it kind of brings that trend back to this is a distribution that um, that you would probably want to give to somebody who's been using computers for quite a while and is pretty set in their ways in terms of how they want to do things. So take that for what it is. But you'll notice that a lot of the window borders, a lot of the theming out of the box, it all kind of harkens back to kind of your Windows 7 era uh, with a lot of the motifs here that they've got going, things like translucency and uh, sort of the raised buttons and gradients and stuff like that. 
it's uh, definitely very different from the flat design that we're kind of seeing take over in uh, in user experience design these days. They've got some interesting uh, apps, uh, app choices out of the box here as well in terms of uh, a few little random tools that I haven't seen before. Again, it's coming back to that theme of being really fully featured. They also have a few proprietary inclusions out of the box, including Skype and also Steam. And like I mentioned before, because it is based off Debian, you do have a pretty vast package base if you want to go and grab more software. Now, the interesting thing is that between this distribution uh, and the Manjaro release, uh, or sorry, the rolling release, you have two different package managers because they are based off different things. Synaptic will handle the package management side of things on the Debian release based distro. And then on the rolling one, you'll have, I believe it'll be Octopi um, as it's the rolling release based on Manjaro. Now, the other thing is, is that because it is a KDE desktop, you also get the KDE Discover um, software manager to handle um, your, you know, adding and removing software as well. Um, this one has undergone a lot of work from the KDE community. And because we're sitting at uh, Plasma version 5.14, I believe, 5.14.3, uh, and the applications frameworks 18.08. Um, it's, it's a relatively recent up-to-date uh, version of KDE and, uh, and with that comes a lot of improvements to um, the Discover Center or the Discover Software Center. Now, the other really fascinating thing about Netrunner is that they actually have a uh, an ARM release specifically for um, the Pinebook, which of course is a super affordable small laptop that you can get that is based on an ARM processor. Now, what is uh, amazing about this is that hobbyists around the Linux community really love um, the, the Pinebook and, uh, and the fact that they have a custom built uh, OS specifically for that with this amount of, um, I guess with this amount of, of power and pre-tweaking all built in, it's actually a pretty awesome, uh, it's actually a very awesome premise. Um, so they've got a bit of a write up in terms of their, um, their release notes for their specific version for the Pinebook uh, and for other ARM based chips. Um, and again, a lot of this boils down to uh, these are each independent sort of distributions. They're not all connected. So you've got Netrunner ARM, Netrunner rolling, and the Netrunner release. Um, and all of those have different bases and are doing different things. Um, but they all provide a very traditional desktop user paradigm and, uh, and a lot of powerful features all built in. Now, my, probably my biggest knock, like I said already, was resource uh, usage, the fact that it is very heavy, especially for a KDE desktop. The other thing is I am honestly not a fan of the, the default look and feel and theme that they have going on. Um, again, this is all personal preference and the fact that they make it super easy to jump in here and customize things the way you want is great, but obviously it's just not my cup of tea out of the box. So where does that leave us with this 2019 release candidate of Netrunner. Well, in my uh, in my opinion, if you were looking for a fully featured uh, KDE Plasma desktop and you had plenty of hardware to throw at it, uh, then this might be worth a look. Some of the other things that I probably would knock it against would be the fact that um, there's no universal package support out of the box. So in terms of snaps or flat packs or um, obviously app images work wherever, so that's great. But, um, but a lot of distributions nowadays are providing excellent flat pack support, things like MX Linux, Linux Mint. Um, these distributions are finding ways to combat the, the release based schedule. Um, so at this point, it's uh, unless you really love KDE and, uh, and you really love digging into um, what these guys, what um, Blue Systems and what Netrunner are doing as, a, as an operating system, or if you happen to have a Pinebook, then um, yeah, then it's worth checking out Netrunner. Otherwise, you guys are probably all perfectly happy with your rolling KDE releases wherever you might be, Tumbleweed or Manjaro or Arch or uh, the other ones I mentioned, Chakra, Chaos, uh, go golly, there's a heap of them. There are a dime a dozen, like I said at the top of the video. But, uh, but I do always find this distribution interesting with what it values and what it sees as a great idea for including out of the box. Um, because some of their tweaks are really useful, things like preloading Firefox to make it launch faster. I appreciate that. Um, more extensions in Dolphin, that's also cool. But there's also a lot of heavy stuff in here as well. Um, so for pretty much every criticism that I have about this distribution, Netrunner has an answer to it. And if you want to give it a bit of time, you might actually enjoy yourself here. Um, apart from that, 
Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you think about KDE. What would be some, what would be an awesome feature that you would love to see included in KDE Plasma by default? That's my question of the day. Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you like this kind of stuff on a regular basis and I will catch you all in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.